look at the styling here of the building. So it has all those little tiny chetties around that are Mon style. Wow. So this is a gigantic Buddha that's just kind of shoehorned in here. Wow, this is, this is really quite something here. So you see his hands are folded here in front of him. You can just barely walk through here. Walk around the side and then there's a second room over here. So the Mon King was King Makuta. And he built this temple while he was in captivity. But the Burmese over the years has corrupted the language from Makuta into Manua, and that's why it's named that. Let's go over and look on the other side. This is, I've never seen a temple like this before. This is, this is really, really cool. And you can see just how colossal this hall is. Oh, here we go. So here is the third seated Buddha. Let's go up here in these steps and see what is back in here. This is the, okay, this is what I wanted to see here. This is the big, huge reclining Buddha. This is the scene of the reclining Buddha right before he went to Nirvana before he died. And then way, way down there, there's his feet. And then he's got one hand here underneath his head. And you can see a little bit of the plaster work up above there is kind of cracked, but it's still pretty nice for this thing being built in the mid 11th century in what, 1069? It is amazing. 1067 is when this was built. influences. It has the Mon and then it has Indian styling also. Yeah, this is really, really nice. Here are some of the small little chetties. And then we have some of the styling here, some of the plaster work. So I don't know how much of this was damaged. In 1975 there was a big earthquake, but a lot of these temples here in Bagan were damaged then. And so we can see some of these little chetties here. I really like these. This styling here is quite cool. You can see the, the lions here, the small little chetties, and then definitely Mon style. You can see the umbrella up there at the top. And then these here, just the, the brick. They don't have any of the plaster on them. So we'll take another look here at this huge chetty. Yeah, this is a beautiful building here. So there's the two temples here. There's the pagoda and then that temple over next to it that was built in 1113. This is the gate to get in. It has the little chetties and stuff up there. And then the outer gate. Then they just have like an open area here with like the shade trees. And then you can see the temple. How cool is it? It was built by King Hitilimeno, thus the name. Now, they also know him as Nanduan Gomwa. I don't know if that's easier to say or more difficult. Look at this. So this is 800 years, 810 years old or so. And it, I guess it was damaged in the earthquake in 1975, like a lot of these temples were, but it's been restored. So let's go inside here. Oh, this is quite nice. So it looks like they have uh, some of the murals in the plaza. And check out this Buddha. So it has like the Sima stone behind him, which is in the shape of like the, the Bodai tree leaf. You can see they painted the roof up there also, the ceiling. Yeah, that's really cool. So here will be the second 
Buddha. There's four in the four cardinal directions in here. You can see the little room that this is in. And the same, it has like a little chetty above the Buddha's head. You can see the Burmese style dress. The men wear those little serapis and the women also. She's holding the flowers and they put that white powder on their face. That's uh, like a natural beauty product that they use. You can just see how tall it is, 149 feet or 49 meters or so. And then it has all the smaller little chetties all around with those little gold umbrellas. One last look at this temple. Yeah, this one is fantastic. The condition of this is one of the best that you'll see here in Bagan. You can see how the vegetation is built up. Now this is 910 years old, is the kind of the era of this. So the fourth king of Bagan. And Bagan was a, just a thriving kingdom from the 9th to the 13th century. This is just absolutely massive. So they have some scaffolding up around, up at the top up there. So it looks like they're doing some restoration way, way up high. But check out that center. Yeah, that is really cool. And it has these series of smaller chetties all around. Oh, this is interesting. So they do have some stairs to go up in there, but it's blocked off. And then the people are down here making some merit. And so it looks like at one time, they would have had a Buddha image right up there also. Yeah, this is, this is really neat. So it has a couple more of the seated images here. You can see we've went almost all the way around on the inside. Yeah, this is really nice. So it looks like they have a Buddha image inside. And they have a ruin over there and some more stuff that they're doing some renovations. And so they have, looks like back-to-back -back Buddhas here. Yeah, this is interesting. the temple and I guess that this is one of the only gates that's surviving the old city of Bagan. There was 18 gates at one time that were built here and this is the only one that's surviving. But you can see the uh, the temple itself back there and it has this huge open courtyard. This is just absolutely beautiful and I guess up there at the top you see that they call that a ziti or something like that. It's called, it's spelled H-T-I, but they pronounce it ziti. And I guess it was damaged during the earthquake in 1975, and it's been repaired. So here is the entryway right here. And you can see the styling along it. And it's shaped like a crucifix, and that goes over to the old gate. 
So the name of this Buddha is the Kaku Senda. And it is uh, about nine meters tall, to give you an idea of the scale. So that's the top of her head. And it's not even to the bottom of the pedestal that this is on. So here are some of the stone tablets. So these are unique. These are uh, carved into these stones. Wow, that's really cool. Some of them are kind of faded, like right here. Looks like somebody in a boat. You can see right there, they have images kind of in the center. So just imagine you're back in the old days. You come in here, you walk underneath this little vestibule to come in here. And this is the first thing you're greeted with is this gigantic Buddha. So they apply this by hand and then they'll let it dry for about a week and then they'll sand it down and polish it and then they'll reapply another coat of this. So he's reapplying his second coat of the lacquer here. And after it dries, they'll sand it. Here you can see she's making the shapes out of the bamboo. But he splits it. And they also use in some horse hair. You can see here they have that. And she's just braiding it over, under, over, under. She's going to tie the next piece in. So she got one piece of horse hair. She's going to do the same thing over, under, over, under. So after it's had the seven coats of the lacquer, then they'll carve in the patterns. Now they can only do one color at a time. So they can do lacquer on pretty much everything. Here she's putting it on this chair. You can see all the styling in it that she's done. The lacquer. And polish. And then dry. Dry one week. Seven days dry. Mm -hmm. So down here is the, the drying area. Oh, this is cool. So they keep it dark. They turn the lights on for us. And these are uh, what is drying down here. And it feels like a sauna in here. to go in. Now the floor plan of this is supposed to be similar to the Anda temple. So we'll see if it's kind of the crucifix design. This is gigantic. The styling of these temples is so cool. So these would have been, they were designed to be like chetties out here. You can see the styling around the windows. And they look like they're lions here. Let's see inside here. So here is a Buddha. So right here by this entrance, it's kind of cool, it has three little chetties up there, and then it has a pretty interesting little reclining Buddha. So we have a uh, double Buddha right here. 
And you can see the archway there has all the, the paintings. So we're here, another one of these long hallways. This is a pleasant little temple, just walk around in here. It's out of the heat. There's just uh, not a whole lot to see because they have the inner part bricked off. You can see it's pretty dark. There isn't any lights on. They just have, uh, they have some of these external lights. Oh, wow. This is really nice. So here is the entranceway. So it's kind of cool. The locals are over here taking pictures. So here is the massive Chetty. How amazing is this? Yeah, that is quite cool. It's a popular place for people to come and take their pictures. legend of this temple here is when the king wanted to build this, King Anawatara, or however you say it, he selected this by putting the relics of the Buddha on the back of a white elephant, and then he turned it loose and he let it walk around here on the plains at Bagan, and where it stopped, they decided that was the place to build the temple. And that's what the Shui Zagon means. It means the, uh, I think the literal translation is like the stupa on the sand dune. And that, that elephant stopped on a sand dune here. So have this little building with one of these standing Buddhas in it. And you can see it has the Buddha footprint down at the base. So we have, these are some of the gnats. <laughs> so there are 37 knots, gnats around here. So these are the lions that will be the guardians to the temple. And there's two of them here. So they have this chetty underneath this building. And then inside of it, this is something in Burmese right here, is a Buddha. And it's right in front of the, the Bodai leaf thing. Yeah, and it's uh, painted gold, and you got to get down on your knees to go in here, and you can actually pray. This little pagoda is fantastic. You can see the way they did the bricks and everything. Here's another one of the standing Buddhas. They're supposed to be about 3.7 to 4 meters tall. So we're here in the evening when it's nice and cool. It's just another one of these just absolutely beautiful temples. That are... This right here is the whole reason I came to Bagan. This is spectacular. Now at one time there was over 10,000 of them, but in the years there's been earthquakes, stuff like that that have caused a lot of them to collapse. And I think there's like 2,200 to 3,000 that are uh, still remaining. This is looking over towards the east of this hill we're on. So they have this little pond here and these trees and just more pagodas. All that gold chetty way over there is quite cool. But the one up closer is huge. Yeah, this is just absolutely amazing. So a popular thing for people to do is come over here and do the hot air balloons. It's about 300 US dollars a person to do the balloons. And you get up here right before dawn, and then you can float up above this plane and see all the temples early in the morning. 